the next question is, you are, we are leaders in communication fields as writing and public commentators. Do we have someone in the public eye who was or is a mentor or influence? Todd? Well, the, the obvious ones are obviously the Estella and the group that sort of blazed the trail at ramp up. I would certainly say that we wouldn't be in this forum without her and um, her contribution can never be underestimated. But I want to talk about the people that you don't read about because um, I had a, a childhood where my diagnosis of cerebral palsy was sort of overdiagnosed. And what I mean by that is that I was diagnosed with intellectual impaired. So I started my school experience at what was then known as a special school. So I had the opportunity to grow up with lots of other disabled people and uh, um, lots of them were older than me and they would tell stories about, uh, you know, going to the pub and getting drunk and going to parties and having you know, their first kiss to the girl that they liked. And they would tell those stories, but they have never had the opportunity to be published. I'm thinking of a particular couple that were 20 years older than me that still provide me with inspiration to this day because they were the first couple that I saw that were both disabled. And at the time I had met them they had just got married and they were together for a very long time and they were proof to me as a person with a disability that I could find love and that I would be valued and I would be respected. Yes, of course, we could fall in love with other people with disabilities, but we could also fall in love with people without disabilities. And you won't get their story published on a website. You won't get their experiences published anywhere. They won't be in books. But I think about them every time I see a disabled friend or a disabled colleague embark on a new relationship. And when people with disabilities get married, like myself, like Carly, like a few mutual friends, um, I think of them as trailblazers that move the path forward and their ability to tell us stories even when they don't realise it. Yeah, I, you're so right there, Todd. There's so many people who have not been able to tell their stories because of this gatekeeping and underestimation. And I think maybe while you were unlucky not to have a mainstream education you were so lucky to be with other disabled people who taught you so much in that way I, I think would you say that yeah I was very lucky because I had the best of both worlds I yeah. started in that special school environment and I was one of the first groups of children to be integrated into a mainstream school mm -hmm. and I'm showing my age here but it's hard to believe it was 1990 so I only just talking about over 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my, yeah, the, the people I really admire and, you know, particularly in media and in literature are, are Stella Young, absolutely. But I also admire Elle Gibbs who just does so much work around media and policy work and just is such a guide and mentor and role model and a real sort of quiet achiever she does not yeah. get the limelight that she deserves there and I, I don't know whether she wants the limelight but certainly she deserves, deserves far more accolades yeah. than, than she, she she she's a remarkable woman um I know I, when I log on to Twitter she's always the first uh, account I go to yep. I, mean, I, I work within the NDIS training others and um you know uh I regard myself within our organisation. People often regard me within the organisation as a politics nerd, but I, I in no way have the ability, have the skills, have the 
talent that she does. So mm -hmm. if um, people are looking for a good follow, follow her on Twitter at L Gibbs. Oh, it's and, Blunt uh, Shovels. Yeah. Blunt Shovels. Oh, Blunt Shovels. <laughs> at lgibbs.com.au. Yeah. lgibbs.com.au. Yeah. Um, follow follow yeah. that. And if you're a young disabled person wanting, wanting to know what's going on, if this event is aimed at, I'm sure if you followed her, it would change, mm -hmm. your, life, change your life and change yeah. the way you think about disability. She was remarkable. Absolutely. And she does a really good media roundup. Um, you know, like often, you know, promotes mm. other articles, particularly disability led. Um, the other people I want to mention are Alice Wong, who runs the Disability Visibility Project from the US. And she's just incredible. Again, a really good media curator, but she's worked with the Barack Obama administration. And um, she, she started the movement Access is Love and talks about how providing accessibility is an act of love. Um, a book that was really impactful on me, I'm just looking how to pronounce um, their name, Leah Lakshmi Piepsma Samarasiha. Um, Leah wrote this incredible book, um, well she's written a few, but the book that I have read is called Care Work and it is around um, being a disabled person of colour and the expectation that we have on each other, particularly in the disability community, to take care of each other, but she you know, talks about lateral violence and she, and sorry, Leah talks about um, the expectation that we will constantly be providing and, and how to create safe spaces and barriers for ourselves. And that was just an incredible book that I read at the start of last year. Um, so yeah, the, the book's Care Work uh, by Leah Lakshmi, Piepsna, Samara Sinha. And it was incredible. And the other um, person that I think that is just doing amazing work is Naz Campanella, who is the disability affairs reporter on the ABC. Again, you know, such a stalwart at the ABC. I think she's been there, you know, 10 or 12 years. She worked at Triple J and she's on mat leave now. She's got a little boy. But uh, just does so much work in amplifying people's voices and... Um, making sure people are heard and it's speaking to a wide variety of people. So lots of, I think there's so many role models that we yeah. have. Just quickly, I want to give a shout out to the Squirly and Grubs YouTube channel with Shane and Hannah Burkle. Mm -hmm. Shane has spinal muscular atrophy and they have an interagent relationship. They've been married, they've been together for a long time. And I see a lot of echoes between their relationship and the relationship that I have with my wife. They do remarkable things. They have a book coming out at the end of the year that discusses the interrelated relationships as mm. well. Mm. And I think that is really important to show people what's possible. And I know that I copped a lot of flack for telling my story to new idea when I got married but I did it because one I got paid for it and it was in my own writing but I also wanted to show people what's possible and you know to so many people I talk to with the skin condition I have with ichthyosis they don't think uh, you know similar to Todd and me that love is ever possible and so I wanted to show them what was possible there um yeah i do like following squirmy and grubs i i watch their instagram i also really like um and the look the title is a little bit difficult i think but the intent is great special books by special kids um and it's a man in um the us chris ulmer who i think started out as a teacher and he goes around america and interviews different disabled people and it's all in their own words and I did an interview a few years ago now two years ago and um it was incredible like the way he really respected my use of the word disabled and we got to talk about the language around the the title and you know it, it was really great and also the surprising thing was he paid me I, I didn't I just thought it was like a podcast that we're going to do and and then I got a heap of money in my bank account which oh. you know it brought me my couch it paid me mm. my couch so that was amazing so um I would say that that is a really great example and, and showing kids and also parents I think I think where we're we sometimes are 
um, held back is when parents have such a low expectation of disabled children and disabled adults. And so to see what's possible is really, really important. We're up to our last question now. These questions are great. Um, so as leaders, what advice do we have with the person with disability who's considering a writing career or an early or is an early career writer to overcome barriers for success? The, the easy, the quick, the glib advice is just three words, and that is go for it. But life isn't that simple and easy, particularly when you're disabled. So I would just say, I think particularly for those who have physical impairments, um, turn on the accessible microphone device on your phone, uh, start talking and or communicating however you communicate into that phone because the best writing comes out of conversations physically related to disability. I know that um, little things that people don't uh, necessarily appreciate, little events, uh, little stories can start a wide chain of thoughts and writing and basically if we take the Carl, Carly's title of her memoir, Say Hello, she was able to take that one phrase and use it as the spine of her book. So um, go for it, write it, start by communicating it in whatever, whatever form, don't be afraid to share it, um, just, you know, um, and remember your voice is unique, it counts and it matters. Absolutely. I think I think writing in or communicating in any form you can is really good. And I would say to someone, don't make a book be the first thing that you write. Like start really small. It can be really small. Like a Facebook status is good enough, I think. A Twitter, you know, a tweet. I've had um things that I've started writing on Facebook um, turn into articles and turn into book chapters. So that counts, like all writing counts. I also think, you know, just do it consistently. I have a lot of people come to me and go, oh, I really want to be a writer, but I don't want to write. I'm like, but that's what writing is. You have to, <laughs> you have to do the work. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean putting in hours and hours a day. You know, I know some people will try and write 2,000 words a day. It's not that. It's getting something down that's meaningful. Um, one thing I find and I hear a lot from particularly people with physical impairments and um, perhaps like what they call brain fog is Instagram is a really great way of writing something meaningful but not too long because there's a real, um, like there's a cap on the, on the characters and the same with LinkedIn, I think, as well. And so people can write these really impactful things that go with a picture or a image text and that's a really good way of writing something and then you know turn that into a, a blog post or an article or, or something like that I think that's really useful um Todd's gone again back he's back um the other thing I think is to tell someone that you're writing it can be really hard to put your stuff out there and from my experience like trolling can be hard and I'm not just talking about people that don't read your article and just you know leave a comment but I'm talking about targeted attacks and targeted lateral violence from the disability community so telling people that you're writing something um, when I was getting published a lot particularly on like Fairfax's daily life um, one of the things that I would do particularly if I was unwell I would tell my editor that um, I'm you know in hospital and I'd ask her not to put my Twitter handle on the, you know, on the article on my byline so I didn't get the tweets. Um, so yeah, tell people that you're doing it, then they can look out for the comments and respond if they want. And also don't read all the comments. You don't need to read all the comments. They don't, don't matter. They're not getting, yeah. then they're generally not getting published. So um, backing on to one of Carly's comments, something I forgot to mention is yeah. people, people with disabilities go at their own pace. So if you're sick or unwell or you're not able to face the day for whatever reason, you go at your own pace. And yeah. although it's hard, try not to compare yourself to other people. 
Just mm. get out of your own feeling in your own time and in your own way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really important, especially if you're an editor or a um, journalist working with a disabled writer to make sure that you give time and, and you allow that quick time for people. Um, we I did an event at the Sydney Writers Festival last year and um, one of the things at Writers Festivals is that, you know, you're quite constrained with time so you get your hour period and then straight after another event, you know, starts or whatever. And if you start late, then sometimes, you know, that cuts into your speaking time. And so I ended up saying, um, can we just start when we start at 12.15, not 12 o'clock and go to 1.15 because we had an hour before the next event was on in the room, which was really great. And so that didn't cut into our time. We talked about crypt time and we talked about the importance of, of that. And the other thing is, yeah, don't, don't compare yourself to, to someone else. Like, don't look at their stats, just focus on yours, run your own race and, you know, measure your own success by if it's helped you, I think, uh, if your piece of writing has helped you, that's successful. And if it's helped someone else, that's successful as well. Well, that was a really great chat. Thank you. Wow. Oh. What a wonderful mm -hmm. conversation. And just right for the series that we've been working on. And I'm, I'm you know, I, I hate that whole kind of inspirational thing, but I'm the parent <laughs> of a person with multiple disabilities. And, and some of the things you said touched on me as you know the outsider to say, I rem remember, remind yourself, but I was really touched by um, the, the perspective you brought to the success of the other people around you more so than yourselves, which is just so lovely, like that humility and hum humble approach. So um, thank you for sharing that. A strong message about payment for people we always mm -hmm. want any creative to be paid, but more particularly, you know, those who are doing creative things in your field. So that's wonderful. Um, I just, I, I, I'll sum up and conclude with a thank you to both of you. But I'm going to quote something that Todd said. He said, your voice is unique. It counts. It matters. And for the two of you, you've brought that to our conversation, but also to the field of, you know, disability representation. So thank you so much for your time. And thank you for fighting the fights that you do. And I hope you get to celebrate the wins when you have them. Thank you so much. That was really fun.